I am fantasy and paranormal romance author Leslie Penelope, and welcome to My Imaginary Friends, a look behind the scenes of an author mapping the worlds in my head and making them a reality. Hello friends, today is Sunday, April 30th, 2023, and this is episode 215 of My Imaginary Friends. I'm Leslie. So this week's best thing was lots of things. First of all, Beastly Kingdom came out on Friday, and it was a very low-key release because I was at a Polycon, which is a very large reader event. It takes place in Northern Virginia, so a short drive away, um, although I was definitely staying in the hotel. And this is my second year doing a Polygon. And so at some point, I decided just to release Beastly Kingdom there. I guess I wanted to take the pressure off because I knew that because I would be sitting at my table or setting up and being at the event, I wouldn't have time to obsess about it, worry about it, worry about how much, you know, social media promotion I was doing, which was almost nothing. I did actually end up doing a post that day. And I had pre-sold a bunch of copies already. I was bringing the paper back there. The timing worked out really well, so... Um, it was nice to have it be lower pressure on me. I mean, I was I was doing a lower pressure release for myself anyway, because it's the second book in the series. And I think I mentioned last week, the pre-orders were 50%. Actually, by the day of release, the pre-orders had gotten to like two, two thirds of the pre-orders for Savage City, the first book, which is excellent. At least the, the Amazon ebook pre-orders. Now, if you count all of the paperback pre-orders and other... Um, other vendors like, you know, Apple, um, Barnes Noble, things like that. It might have been more, the bulk of my sales come from Amazon. So I sort of look at that and this is the easiest number to look at. Then I have to go into draft to digital. <laughs> into draft to digital. I was talking for two days and I, my voice doesn't sound as bad as it did last night, but my ability to articulate is uh, compromised because of <laughs> the exhaustion in the conference. So I don't want to have to edit this like uh, to death, um, but we'll see. Draft to Digital is an aggregator, which is how I get to stores like Apple and Barnes and Noble and Kobo. If I don't go direct, sidebar. Anyway, their reporting is very difficult to read. It's like they've got the reports that they have, which are fine, but like the granular things. So I often just take a look at it, see how it's doing in general, but I don't go specifically. I do use a service called ScribeCount, um, but they raise their prices. And so I only, I like sign up for a month at a time every four to six months just to check out everything. Total sidebar, if you want to know more about those things, email me. I can talk about them at some point again. Digressing. Polycon was great. Uh, Had a good time. Sold a lot of books. I met my goal. It was hard to know what to expect. So when you take physical books to an event like that, you don't know how many you're going to sell. So you don't know how many to bring and you don't want to carry a lot there and then bring them all back and order too many. Um, Now, I was in the position where I have a lot of Ursinger Chronicles. I bought them for my publisher at extremely discounted prices because they were remaindered. And so I just have a couple boxes of each of them. And I was like, well, you know, I'll sell them in perpetuity. I'll probably have a sale at some point. I knew I was doing a Polycon and Imaginary and Book Festival, which is coming up in May in Washington, D.C. And last year at this event, there is a bookstore for traditionally published authors, but they had virtually none of my books. I mean, they had like four copies of one or the other. So I brought a lot. But of course, this year, the bookstore had a lot, too. So I didn't sell as many as maybe I could have had I brought them last year, had I had them. But people were coming down and getting me to sign copies of the song and whispers, um, So I was happy about people getting the books and the books selling, and it's all good. Uh, I did sell out of Monsters, and I sold out of Savage City, and I sold most of my copies of Beastly. So overall, meeting readers who already knew me and meeting new readers and signing lots of books, selling lots of books, it was cool. Meeting a lot of author friends, old and new, getting a chance to network and just have those in-person connections which with both readers and authors, which can be really uh, important and powerful. You know, on the author side, this is such a lonely pursuit. We're here in our little caves by ourselves. Um, and so, yeah, having a in-life, in-real-life place to meet up with people since, you know, some of the places that I used to do that are no longer in existence. Good time was had by all. It was raining the whole time and... You know, there were always some hiccups with live events, but overall I had a good time. I have signed up for next year. I should have, I mean, the third 
uh, Bliss Boar's book will be out by next up Polycon. I'm, I'm not going to say anything about release dates yet, but um, I'm moving it up on the schedule. I don't know when uh, the Black Towns book will come out. Hopefully it will be out. Maybe not. I guess we'll see. I might have some advanced copies. Who knows? I've already signed up. You have to sign up a year in advance. So I'm committed to next year's of Polycon unless something strange happens. But it, it's a it's a good event, and I, I enjoyed it, even though it is draining. And this is the morning after. I've just driven home this morning. It's um, I'm recording this at 9.47 in the morning. And I had intended to sleep in a little bit at the hotel, but the room next to me, the alarm was going off. And I guess the beds were you know sharing a wall, so I could hear it pretty clearly. And it went off at like 5.55 a.m., and then it just kept going. And I was like... Did the person already check out and they forgot they set the the you know clock um, alarm? And so like 10 minutes, I waited 10 minutes. I was trying to go back to sleep. I did not bring my headphones. I couldn't drown out the sound. And I called the front desk and I'm like, I'm not sure if that room is empty, but that alarm has been going off for a long time. And can you please make it stop? So they said they were going to send security. And then I just decided to get up and take a shower because I could not go back to sleep at that point. So I'm getting here early. My voice is okay, sort of, kind of rough, and just the exhaustion is is very real. Other good things that happened this week, I had the first session of the cohort for my course, Imaginary World Building, Creating Fictional Worlds for Writers, and that was a lot of fun. I was a little bit nervous going into it because it's the very first time I'm running the course this way. Uh, so, the, you know, the bulk of the course is self-paced and you can get that totally, you know, do the modules, do the video modules whenever you want to. Or you can do the mage level, which is these four weekly sessions. And so three more coming up. And it went really well. And I felt like uh, I was able to help people in the course. And it's fun meeting people and learning about their stories and what they're working on. And also just seeing how people, different people approach storytelling and writing and the process. And so the course, my course is teaching sort of my process, but I know that no one else can have my process. So it's really about saying, this is how I do it. Take what's helpful. Think about it this way if you haven't before, and maybe you will be able to incorporate some of my techniques or just the way I go about things into your own work. And so... Yeah, seeing that kind of happen in real life and just giving my perspective, hopefully I can help people get their story out of them, get their world built, and feel like they're moving forward and making progress uh, with their right, which is always cool. This week, I also took a workshop webinar on um, prioritization, which I saw it in a newsletter that I uh, subscribed to, and it was just like, you know, an hour and a half, so I decided it was free, and it was actually really helpful. When I prioritize, I usually, you know, all the projects that I have, like I think I mentioned last week or the week before, going back through the HB90 method, Sarah Cannon's planning method, and looking at what success means to me, what are my goals, uh, doing the quarterly planning for this year. I didn't quite do quarterly planning, but I was really focused on goal setting, and that's really been on my mind. So this, this course takes prioritization of all the things that you want to do in a given time period or in the nearest future and does them a different way than I have done before, which I found helpful. So essentially, it's like, what are the things that are important to you? What are your core values and in your life and in your work? So they have you create this decision matrix and you take what's important to you and you turn those things into your criteria from which you're going to make your decisions. So the kind of basic ones that they give you are quick win, something that you can finish quickly just to have that dopamine release or whatever it is. Another one might be money. You really need to make some more money right now. Platform building is another one. And then some of the other ones I chose after that are like the additional factors that come into play. So they wanted you to have up to 10 criteria. So I kept quick wins, money, pl platform, building my platform doing things that align with my values. And then also I want to be learning. I want to be challenged. That was one. I want to have my criteria include things that excite me, which is what I've always used kind of. Also things that support my personal growth, things that allow me to share my, my strengths. So I had eight buckets of criteria, like columns on a spreadsheet. Then you give each of those things weights from one to five, one lowest, five highest. Like how much do you care about this thing? 
So um, it being a quick win for me, it was like a three out of five. Like, I don't mind spending a little bit more time on things. It's kind of important. Yeah. Money was a five. I would like to focus my efforts because I do a lot of things that don't make money. <laughs> so moving forward, I would like to do some things that do. Um, building my platform was a little bit lower, was a three. So on and on like that. And I gave each one of my criteria weights. And then you list out what are the potential things that you're thinking of working on that you need to prioritize. And the end result or the end goal is to get a score for each of those things to help you figure out how they line up with this criteria that you've weighted. So I listed doing a mini workshop. So I've got the full course. I do want to do a mini workshop that is a lower cost entry point that will allow people who maybe can't afford the full course or don't have the time for it to get something and then maybe lead people into the full course. I also am thinking about t turning the or adding on a paid tier to the footnotes newsletter, which is the newsletter for writers that does the show notes for this podcast. Um, I have a couple other things on the list. So I listed those out and then for each of the eight criteria, I gave it a weight. So let's say the mini workshop, quick win. It's not really that quick of a win. I'd have to actually build it and record it. So that's a one. Money, I would charge a small amount for it. So it would bring in not a lot of money. Like I don't know how much, somewhere between seven and 27 or $29. <laughs> like it'd be one of those things. Like, so it's, um, low barrier to entry. Like if I see, I've bought so many $7 workshops, it's ridiculous. Cause it's like, there's absolutely no barrier to entry for $7. Even $29 is pretty low. You know, I'm like, um, yeah, under 30 bucks. I can do that. I put that as a four for money because it, it is, it might, it might, other people might rate it lower, but for me, even that little bit is something. And then you, it's a, a volume game. Um, but for mini workshop platform, it's not really going to build my platform that much as an author. It could build a platform for something else, but I'm not really trying to do that. Um, and on and on like that. So then they gave us a spreadsheet that actually calculates it. I think it just multiplies it. Um, yeah. So basically you can make your own spreadsheet that multiplies the weight of the criteria times the weight that you've given the thing that you are considering doing. And then there's a column. So I went through all of this and, you know, two of the things stood out a lot. 91 was the highest one that I had. And actually, if we're the turning the newsletter to paid got the highest score. So that should be, if you follow this, your top priority, because it is a quick win. Um, it gives, I put it at a two for money because I don't expect a lot of people to pay, but um, it does build the platform and it allows me to continue to learn and be challenged, supports my growth and shares my strength. So the things that I valued that were important to me and it has high numbers across the board, it got the highest score. They also talked about how if you, there's something you really want to do that's getting a low score, look at your criteria and how you've weighted them. Because if there's a thing I really wanted to do, but I gave it ones on everything I said that was important to me, and that's why it had a low score, are those things that I think are important actually important? And this thing I really want to do, you know, you just have to really balance or juggle the things you want to do and the things that are important to you. And hopefully they line up. So for me, all of these things were fine. I wanted to do all of them anyway. And it's just a matter of which one should I do first? And this made it really clear in a relatively short amount of time, um, what that could be. So I thought it was really helpful. I can't share the spreadsheet just because I don't know, it's copywritten and you have to get it when you sign up for this. But if you just think about it, uh, you have the columns for each of your criteria and then one column at the front for the things. And then you just have like an Excel spreadsheet where you multiply numbers together. <laughs> Hopefully that's clear. I don't know if they're going to do this workshop again, but I will link to uh, Jessica Abel is the woman in her website. She has other workshops for creatives and courses and things. And maybe if you get on her newsletter, they might she might do this again at some point. Uh, but it was yeah, it was super helpful for clarifying what I want to be doing and how I'm approaching it. I have a lot of fear about asking for money. <laughs> Like if I'm selling you a book, that's one thing. But I've been thinking about, you know, the footnotes newsletter. I really enjoy doing it weekly. It does add, it's an extra hour a week minimum, sometimes a little bit more than that, to figure out how I want to summarize the articles. I do some of that during the week, like as I'm clipping articles and saving them, which I was doing anyway. 
and then we're kind of writing notes about them, highlighting different things. It takes an hour to figure out, okay, what are the three to five articles I want to highlight and then sort of writing my little summary of them and formatting the newsletter, all of that. So I don't want to add extra things, but I want it to be something that is going to feed me and is going to actually help other people, but also help me at the same time. And so I'm still thinking about what that is and what I can do on a somewhat consistent basis that then I can, you know, turn on a level of payment for that newsletter and reasonably ask people for money for that. There is a cool article that I read about why it's so hard for creatives to ask for money. And I saw it shared a lot on Substack Notes and I will put that in the show notes. So that's easy. That's one of my one of my articles for the week. I just decided it was going to be that. It's already saved and I just I never know what I'm going to include until after I record the podcast because I still it's still aligned with me and what I'm doing, what I'm thinking about. And so sometimes they're thematically linked and sometimes they're not. Sometimes the things I'm thinking about that week are thematically linked and sometimes they're not. And if you are listening to this in real time, uh, there's a multi-author book signing happening in Ellicott City, Maryland on Thursday, May 4th, 2023 at Backwater Books. It's in Old Town, Ellicott City. Um, it's a really cute shop. They're supposed to be adding a bar. It might be there now. I was there a few months ago and um, yeah, cute little indie bookshop. A bunch of local authors are going. I will link to it in the show notes. So yes, if you happen to be in the area and didn't you hear this in time, check it out. Hopefully I'll have books to sell. I don't have any Savage City. I sold completely out, but I should have most of the other books available. And I think I might have to go take a nap. Um, I do need to clean my office. It's gotten to the egregious point. I usually like, I clean my office every few months when it gets so bad that I start not being able to function in it. And we have achieved that level. So my Sunday will be spent doing that and then resting. And I think I'm going to try to make some gluten-free oatmeal cookies with this new gluten-free flour that I bought on Amazon. It was very expensive and I have not used it yet. Goals for the week. Um, I didn't write at all this week. I think I buried the lead on that. <laughs> I was prepping, like I had to leave for Polycon on Thursday. Um, I was still doing admin. I was planning for this release, even though that didn't require a lot of planning. But So I'm committed to May. I ended up taking the whole, basically the whole month, well, the last half of the month of April off of writing which was necessary, but I'm starting to get a little itchy and I don't want to leave it any longer or else it will be really hard to get back. So I'm starting the writing next week. I am moving up Brutal Fortress, the third Bliss Wars. I'm going to start the plotting of that and hopefully that will go well and we'll see. I'm still playing it by ear. I'm not doing hard schedules because I feel like I still need to be gentle with myself. Um, but I want to write. I love, I love to write and there's ideas that have to get out. There's books that have to get written. And I, I think that I've had a nice little rest so that my brain is not so overwhelmed and that burnt out feeling has receded a lot. So I'm going to just take it easy, see how it goes. Yeah. So I hope that everyone has a wonderful week and I will talk to you next week. For episode show notes and to sign up for the Footnotes newsletter and get the show notes in your inbox, go to myimaginaryfriends.net. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and watch the video episodes on YouTube. You can email me at podcast at lpenelope.com and I would really appreciate a rating or review to help support the show. My Imaginary Friends is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. For more fantastic podcasts, go to frolic.media slash podcasts. <laughs>